recipes aside from the anti-mage. So you're going to have the roots from the Lone Druid. The Lone Druid can also roar. I'm looking at this lineup, you know, who's draft? Okay, so it looks like they have sort of drafted. Okay, so whatever draft we're seeing on screen, that is for that team. So Puppy's lineup is playing with the Crystal Maiden Mirana like an Oracle Silencer lineup. Yes, I, I believe that is correct. So Chuan's side going to be on the Dire with the Slark Bloodseeker, Terror Blade, Anti Mage, Lone Druid. I like this secret draft much, much better. I do. Um, I, I'm really surprised to see Silencer be that last hero that they, they picked up. I feel like Silencer is sort of a miserable hero to play against, especially if you know you have an Anti-Mage, a Slark, a Terra Blade, three heroes that if they can't get their key spells off at the right time, really get shut down pretty effectively. And we will see Puppy be the one to actually pick up the Silencer. So, um, yeah, that's going uh, right. to be tough for Team Chuan. I wish I knew who was who, because all we know is that we have Puppy on the Silencer, Yapso is on the Anti-Mage, and, and I, I believe mid one's on the Bloodseeker. I, th I think Chuan is on the Lone Druid. I assume he's, that he's, he's the captain down there on the Dire, and he picked okay. up uh, the Lone Druid at the very end. So very interesting drafts. Completely different strategies, which is pretty fascinating to see. I do, Even though I favorite the secret lineup, I do think the Chuan lineup has some merit. If they can somehow survive this laning phase, they will have a good late game. That's what I'm thinking as well. If they... As you said, if they have a decent laning phase, they have some decent transitions. I want to know who is playing the supports, though, because mm. at this point of time, I'm figuring Slark is definitely one of them. But who is the other one mm. for the Dire side? Because the only other hero that I think can play a decent support is... It's got to be Bloodseeker, I think. It's Bloodseeker, or they can go out on a limb and have a roaming lone druid. A roaming lone druid. Well, that sounds terrible. That sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who knows, right? Is it, is it lone, I th when I think of Lone Druid, I think of like one of the most farm-dependent heroes in the game. You know, he's one of those guys that, sure, if you give him some space, he's going to take over a lane, but he really, really likes to farm but in the early phase. But now he has to compete with a Terror Blade and an Anti-Mage that yeah, also needs point. farm. So I think out of all the heroes, Lone Druid probably needs some of the least. And then Slark, you're just like, Slark, you, you are just there for a pounce, okay? You just, yeah. just get out of here, okay? Stay here for the pounce. Well, I was thinking the Bloodseeker, because at least Slark and Bloodseeker have a little synergy. You hit the pounce, and then you put the blood right on top of it. They can't get out. You have some silence damage. I mean, it's not the best combo, <laughs> but I, I mean... I love how we're just trying to make the best of a horrible situation. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, going to be jumping into the game soon, but... So we've spoken about the Dire side lineup. I want to talk about Puppy's lineup. You know, what are you going to be doing mm -hmm. with the CM Marana? Are you guys going to be pushing for these ganks? Because you have decent roaming support. Although mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's Oracle roaming with the CM. Yeah. So Marana's mid. That's an interesting Marana? question. We'll have to see how the lane's set up. It'll probably be safe lane Lycan. It could be off lane Marana with a mid silencer. I know Puppy is generally no a way of killing that Marana. Right. Although and, well, pouncing Marana, she cannot leap away. That right. is one thing to consider. Nah, that's a really good point, actually. So I guess Slark does have a, a little bit of merit there. Um, Puppy picked up the silencer, and obviously Puppy is a support player, but in this situation when it's three pros and two pub players, I think Puppy might be tempted to actually take the core role. So we'll see when we get in, but I would suspect it's actually going to be a core silencer. You think so? Well, it could uh, be we'll good, though. You I get mean, early kills, you steal their intelligence, and we're actually in the game here. We've got Crystal Maiden and Marana going to be pulling this small uh, small wave of creeps. And it is going to be the offlane Marana, like we said. Yeah. Okay. It's an offlane... Oh, offlane Bloodseeker. So who's playing the supports? So offlane Bloodseeker with the safe lane Lycan. It looks like it is indeed Puppy taking that silencer to the mid. So um, we do have... Okay, mid lone droid, we have a roaming slark, and they've decided to make the terror blade a support. Huh, support terror blade. Well, it looks like slark is actually getting some safe lane farm up top, so he'll be okay. Yeah, I'm not convinced about this roaming terror blade. I guess there's at least some merit in the idea of you have metamorphosis so that you can uh, do some ranged harass, but it's gonna down try bottom. And do some jukes, but I think this is going to be the end of mid one, although we've got the. What? Yeah! come in on the anti-mage, but I don't think they're going to be able to save him. That looks like it's first blood, and Yavsaw, he did blink in, seven seconds on the blink, and they're actually going to turn around because they have their terror blade roaming in, and they're still going to try and man fight this Lycan, going to have to try and run away. We've got the poor Crystal Maiden hitting like a puppy, but... Well. All right. That Yapsor anti-mage, you gotta look out for those rotations early on. They make it a one-for-one. One. First blood does go the way of the Radiant, but uh, they kind of square it up, and we will go back to farming. So off lane anti-mage. Aggressive tri-lane? Is it? 
Oh, I, I guess TBD. It looks like the Oracle is rotated down. Oh, well, they're just sharing the farm. They say, okay, guys, if you're here, you just fight with us. Whoever's in lane, just farm. So they're basically all position, what, 2.5s? Yeah, I mean, I think for Team Chuan on the Dire, it's definitely about just find farm wherever you can. All we have to do is stall this game out. They are going to find the Oracle who went in maybe to drop a deep ward, but he's going to get body blocked, and this is going to be an easy kill for the Dire. Yaps are going to be the one to clean it up on the anti-mage uh, with the early boots. Well... Seen a couple of shenanigans. We have uh, Terrorblade and Anti Mage roaming around. Looks like they're going to be sending the Bloodseeker back into that bottom lane. Lone Druid not having the best time versus Silencer. As you said, Silencer one of the most annoying heroes to lane against. Yeah. And it looks like they're going to get a kill onto mid one again. Oh my. Good boy. That Crystal Maiden. It was one of the first picks, and we were both surprised to see it. This is the stage of the game where she really shines, puts a lot of pressure on in the laning phase, and uh, we're definitely seeing the benefits here for the Lycan. Seven and six. I wonder, the CM pick, if it's technically an investment pick. They say, okay, we acknowledge that early game laning phase is going to be a bit of a hassle, but she will be an easy yeah. target in that mid game. That's a, r a really fair point. Uh, if they make it to the mid game without too many losses, she is going to get eaten up. And even right now, the Crystal Maiden taking so much damage, she evaporates. The Terra Blade has come down. He's popped the Metamorphosis, and the pressure is on. Oracle actually goes back in. That is not a hero you're going to want to go blow for blow with. And Dire are putting the pressure on. This Lycan's life is going to get a lot more difficult. We'll say their CS is looking much better on the Radiant side. The Dire, they've been so focused on farming and laning and just getting that EXP that their CS has suffered quite a bit. This Marana sitting at 20 to 10, 16 to, eight, 16 to 8 on the Silencer, 10 to 8 on the Lycan. And then the following four heroes, they're from the Dire. They've just been roaming around trying to secure their lanes, but technically the lanes are not secured. Yeah, I mean, they don't really have a choice. This draft is really wonky and hard to execute with. Yapsor taking some damage, but he's got the blink to make it back. Bounty runes get picked up, and it is going to be the Lycan that snags it. Now the fortunes end from Oracle. They're going to go in, and oh. they find the kill. The Terra Blade will fall, and it's actually Oracle that gets credit for that one. It looks like Puppy going to be playing with his food here. This poor lone druid, there's no boots on his bear, going to go for the Savage roll. We'll keep him alive. But right. we can see Puppy just dominating this mid lane. Yeah, picked up the haste rune there, so uh, definitely had an opportunity to put on some pressure, and that's exactly how you need to do against the Lone Druid. Dominate any opportunity that you have. Of course, uh, rotation may be on the way, but it looks like he's just going to head back down bottom, try to put more pressure on this like, and it is a defensive try lane for Team Puppy, so they are putting a lot of resources into trying to secure this farm for the Lycan. Looks like we're going to kill in the top lane as well. Slot going to be taken out by the Marana. I've got a... Silence being thrown down in that bottom lane. They're going to try and commit onto these heroes now. Lycan very low, so is the Oracle. And it looks like Oracle is going to be the primary target. Going to chew him down, just like a chew toy. Oh, no. And this CM, she is squishy. Two more hits should be enough. One more from the anti-mage. And Yamso will eat that one up. And it looks like hello on this Marana's come in as well. But can they secure this kill? They're going to try and go onto mid one. Starfall, is that going to be enough? They will take him down. So a successful rotation from the Marana. But this does open up the top lane for the Slark, who has been struggling. Yeah, nicely done, though. I think it's a good rotation for the Marana. She's been dominating in that top lane and being able to get that kill on mid one definitely uh, bodes well for her. Um, inner Farts. Oh, well, that's a great name. <laughs> we'll see oh. if the Slark can find some recovery for him. I, I think, as you mentioned, like level six is going to be huge for the Slark. And once he gets to that point, that might open up some roaming. Uh, possibilities. We see Slarks often stay pretty quiet until they pick up a Shadow Blade, and that's usually the item that steps up the aggression. Be curious to see if that's the item choice he goes for here in Reverse Captain's mode. Meanwhile, mid lane, though, we've got a team fight breaking out. A lot of rotations coming in, and Puppy in big trouble. But no, it's actually the Terra Blade that's in trouble. He gets turned on. He'll be the first to fall. Yapsor on his way out. Marana very low, but they won't have the damage to bring her down, and that's where it will end. Another kill goes the way of Team Puppy on the Radiant. Looks like bottom though, mid one gonna go ham onto this like and just going for right click after right click, considering how low the Marana was, so He's going to be getting that uh, bloodlust, not bloodlust, thirst. Thirst. That thirst yes. buff. We very rarely see blood seekers nowadays. Mm -hmm. Fun hero there. He's got the hand of Midas. Oh, okay. Uh, fairly common on that hero. Uh, and again, it's like we said, when you have a, a draft like this with so many cores, some of them will get farm. And Yapsor playing this roaming anti-mage is actually 
working out decently well. He's starting as this roaming support, but may actually end up transitioning into a core. But uh, like you were mentioning, Radiant are just getting way more economy out of this laning phase. We'll see a little juking in the tree line here as Oracle and Anti-Mage have a couple of love taps, but Moran is going to rotate down and uh, they'll push Yapsor back. Pesky little Anti-Mage that he is. It's taking a lot of damage as well. I'm actually curious to know why no one has picked up a stout shield, considering that they're skirmishing quite a bit. Yeah, that's a fair point. Definitely a value item in these kind of situations. No surprise to see one on the Lone Druid's Bear, but spending a lot of time just farming away in the mid. Not really able to secure that much in the mid lane, but we can take a look at the net worth right now. I've got top three on the side of Team Puppy, followed by the remaining five heroes on the side of Team Chuan. Crystal Maiden, Oracle, they're on the bottom, but their support heroes, they don't really need the farm as much as the cores on the side of Team Puppy. And uh, Inner Farts, yeah. running away from Hello. Yeah, in, in some ways I agree with you, but in other ways I kind of disagree. The farm is really top heavy, which is great for the, the, the Team Puppy squad, but their supports are really, really poor. And you see Yapsor kind of farming on par with the rest of their cores. I think another five minutes of this, and uh, things are going to look a little bit better for Team Chuan. Now we'll see initiation on Puppy in the mid lane. They're diving him deep. He's getting low. Bloodseeker comes in with the blood right, and that will find the kill mid one. Secures it, and Crystal Maiden, actually, she might be the next one to fall. It's a double. Yapsor picks up another. Looking for another one as well. No way to cancel that TP, so the Lycan will manage to get home safe and sound. But the Marana's here. What is Hello doing? He's very bold. He wants to go to Yapsor, gets that kill. But will he get punished for it? He's got no leap available, not wow. going to commit. They're playing very, very safely. Cause look at these wolves. Wolves. Wow. <laughs> very uncharacteristic play uh, from Yapsor there, but a surprising amount of burst damage. Potom has the maxed out Star Storm. He got hit by the extra star and a couple of auto attacks, uh, as well as it looks like a tower shot perhaps there at the end. Lots of burst damage on that anti-mage. Yeah, just misjudging it. Oh, well, level nine as well on that Marana. He's sitting on a very high level at this point. Looks like Lone Druid going to come back in. That should be enough to keep their tower at bay. Now it looks like we've got Yapso finally able to get some farm. He's picked up an urn okay. of all items and Tranquil Boots Earn, pretty standard anti-mage build. Very standard. But it does give him a lot of regen. I actually really like the build, though. It allows him to roam for the team. Yeah. His mana burn has been a huge nuisance, especially for those squishy supports. Yeah, it's quite good. Earn, really a good value item at this stage in the game. Lycan going to pick up Brown Boots into Helm of the Dominator. No big surprise there. Able to farm very nicely. The attack speed regen aura, very good for pushing towers with your zoo army. A little tower pushing now from Team Puppy. They're going to group up in the top. They've got four heroes, uh, actually all five heroes up here making this rotation. So this should be a pretty easy tier one tower kill, but a little bit of counter pressure, pressure coming from Team Chuan, uh, both in the mid and maybe in the bottom as well, as that's now a completely open lane. And it looks like everyone's going to be completely bailing here on the side of Team Chuan. They know something is up, and it looks like for now they're going to be able to keep their heroes alive. They've still got Yavso farming away in that bottom lane. They weren't able to quite do too much damage to that mid tower. I was actually expecting Lone Druid to be able to get a couple of, uh, get decent damage down on the tower because he has that bear, but I guess they're playing very cautiously. Also going to be heading for that Midas. So two heroes on the side of Chuan looking for Midas's and it's mid one's Bloodseeker and the Lone Druid. Yeah, it definitely wasn't an easy mid matchup for the Lone Druid. He's going to go for the Hand of Midas, maybe into the Radiance build. Very greedy, but kind of what you would expect out of the Lone Druid. So definitely not the stage of the game where you really expect Chuan to come online. But now the initiation mid, Reflection comes out. They get oh. the Roar as well as the Root. The Oracle gets evaporated, but on the backside, the Marana not going to be able to survive. It's a two for one as the Terra Blade also gets picked off. Marana finding that kill, but all the while, it's Lycan up top. He gets a tier two tower. Now Puppy caught by the Pounce. He's going to survive, and it looks like Slark is going to make his way out. He does have the ult loud, but uh, he's out of mana here, so not going to be able to pounce to safety. He's taking a lot of damage. He should be able to live through this, though. Yeah, there we go. Shadow right. Dance passive going to kick in and get all that health back up. But considering those turn of events, though, it's... Uh-oh. Oh, God. It's a big bad Lycan. He's in ultimate form, and he's going to try to chase down this Terra Blade. Maybe not the easiest kill to find, but he is doing a lot of damage oh. as Puppy comes in, and they will finish him off. Nice rotation from the Lycan. He finishes off the Tier 2 tower top, makes the rotation, finds a kill, and now they can transition this into a Tier 1 tower push mid. I'm assuming the Lone Druid um, Savage Roar on the bear was just coming off cooldown. Yeah. That may have been why it was so late. Pretty unfortunate, but again, it's going to be another tower going in their way. Unless they're going to try and intercept this, the Lone Druid are going to try and go for a deny. He can't quite get it. Now they're going to be slowed. 
And this bear, probably going to drop here, will be locked up here by the Oracle. They're all going to come in. Do they want to commit for this, though? The bear running forward. They're going to try and slow them down as well. The blood right is going to be thrown down. Crystal Maiden, the first one to fall. Going to be looking for the Lycan. Savage Roar is there. Now he's stuck in the tree line. He's going to be fighting against a bear, a Terror Blade, and an Anti Mage. He can't go anywhere. That's going to be three down as oh, Puppy wow. also gets taken down. And look at mid one. He's going to go ham. Going to be also going for this Oracle. He's taken down as well. And. Boy, oh boy, was that oh towel my. worth it? I don't know. An absolute disaster for Team Puppy. They overcommitted. Didn't seem like they were expecting Team Chuan to make a defense uh, quite like that, but they rotated their entire team. They find four kills out of it. What's really sad here, though, Danny, is that the Radiant still have a, a pretty sizable net worth lead. Yeah, that's very true. But they do have a lot of towers to, to make up for all that gold. Yeah. So if we can start seeing towers being taken down by Team Chuan, it could be completely different. But Terror Blade going to be jumped on here by the runner, leaping forward, wants to commit. Now just goes straight for the TP. But there's the ultimate from Yasuo. Going to be saying hello, goodbye. Now can they kill them? Oh, the, oh. Rup no, the rupture. Going to be enough to take him down. Now MiJ, he needs to try and run away. The Crystal Maiden says, no, guys, I'm out. Sorry, GG. Gets one hit on the courier before he drops. Uh, very nice. More momentum going the way. The Dire beautifully done by mid one right there to hang on to that rupture, knowing the Marana had a leap just about to come up, was able to rupture him right as he leaps away and sures the kill. Now Radiant make the rotation into the big boy. They head into the pit with the Lycan. Should be a, a pretty easy kill even at this stage in the game. The Helm of the Dominator also really helps things out. Okay, we'll see if they're going to get this successfully. It looks like it hasn't been detected at all, so it could be a one-to-one -one here if they can take this tower down, but I think at the rate that the Roche is going down, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, and there it is. Puppy going to be the one to grab the Aegis. Turning into a pretty interesting mid-game here as we're getting out of the laning phase. Radiant still holding on to a lead. Marana, number one on farm, looking very strong, but I have to say Dyer are hanging in there. They've got two hands of Midas now, one on the Bloodseeker and one on the Lone Druid, so Where's they are the Druid bear? definitely committed dead? to the late game. I think they might have killed it. It may be split pushing somewhere. I'm actually not sure. I've lost track of the bear. I'm pretty sure it's dead. Yeah, likely. Well, but starting to slowly get some of these items. I'm wondering if we're going to be seeing any big item pickups anytime soon on Team Sean, because as you said, they're sharing a lot of their farm. And because of this, no one's, a no one's been able to really finish anything off. Like, Terrible just has drums. Although, mid one, he's been the breadwinner here. He has a Midas. Yeah, he's going to pick up the Blade Mail next, a very popular item on the Bloodseeker. Initiation on Puppy up top, Rupture, but he's just going to TP out after a Moonlit Shadow. Very oh, nice. A global Lycan. silence on top of that. So Lycan can maybe chase this down and find a kill. The Pounce from Slark to get away. Inner oh. Farts in a lot of trouble here, but he's got the Dark Pact, and he will make it out. I'm sorry, that's Shadow Dance. <laughs> it's okay. Very, very close, though. Looks like they're going to run away with the Lycan. Now, do they turn around? Do they know where he is? They know where mid one is. They've got the creep wave chasing him down, so it looks like no one's going to be dying today. Got a push happening yeah. in that bottom lane, though. We have the Marana, CM, and Oracle going to slowly chew that down. What's the game plan here now for Team Tron, though? They've been able to hold on. They've gotten some pretty good kills. Is it just a farming game now? Yeah, I think it's just hold on for dear life. Honestly, I think Team Puppy is going to turn this into a really high-octane game now that they've finished off Roche. They know they're on the timer. They know their team is not going to scale late game the same way Team Chuan will, especially given the item choices, seeing those double Midas farming tools. So this is the time to strike. 4K of that net worth on the Dyer is basically invested in attack speed and the ability to transmute creeps. So that lead, even though it's 3K, 3.5K right now, it's actually functionally a bit bigger than that. And I have to imagine Team Puppy will be looking to push that advantage. So for the Dyer, it's play defense, minimize your losses, and keep farming until those BKBs can come out. Let's see if they're going to be able to get some fruit from this. It could be a very successful gank. They do have a couple of heroes here. Yapso straight for the blink out. No way of initiating onto him, so it's going to be a missed opportunity. Oracle, the, the stun going to be tailing him. And... Uh, do they know if anyone's here? It looks like they might know. Terrible just going for the Duke's gonna run away. He even pops his drums as well. He's like, guys, please get me out of here. Gonna be hiding in the tree line. Yeah, and waiting TP for that on cooldown. Cool That's oh, a bit of a bummer. Have they him? Not even level six, so no Sunder gonna be available. And I think this is a dead Terror Blade. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, not really able to 
achieve too much. Looks like they're gonna kill onto the Lycan though. They will be losing their anti-mage in the process, but that was mid one, being able to get the kill onto the Lycan. A very big hero on yeah. the side of Team Puppy's team. He's pretty much their main carry if you don't want to include the silence. So they're gonna keep on chasing. Hello being very aggressive with his positioning. And Puppy just gonna go forward, get those hits onto Terror Blade, because Terror Blade's squishy right now. Yeah. Even with the drums, I think it was the right item choice just to get a little bit of meat on those bones, but he is still a squish master. Puppy in very deep right now. He drops the global. It'll cost him his life. It's only the Aegis. Now the CM drops the ult doing so much damage here. Finishes off the Terra Blade, and it is going to be a successful set of kills for Team Puppy. Great use of the Aegis, and now this will secure a Tier 2 tower. Only one Tier 2 remains, and it's going to be in the mid lane. Got to say, Chuan probably going to be looking at this game and saying, okay, guys, we may have messed up the draft. Yeah, um, I, I, I kind of think so. Th this draft for Team Puppy is just, it's not perfectly balanced, but it has some semblance of balance. I, I think that Lycan pick, if that were you know, a Huskar or some other hero that does damage but can't push like this, this game would look a lot different. But Lycan is such a great hero in this kind of a situation. You've got five late gamers. This is a field day for him. He's able to knock down these towers, and there's really nothing that Team Chuan can do to contest. Now that gold lead, very sizable, uh, upwards of about 7,000. She's going to get worse and worse from here on out, unless they're able to take a very convincing fight and start pushing some of these towers down because still, look at this tower game. No towers yeah. have dropped on the side of Team Puppy. Yeah. All T1s are intact, whereas you look at Chuan's side of the map, T1 top, gone. And look at this build from Puppy on the silencer. He went for the Spirit Vessel, and now he's going into a Heart of Tarask. He's already got 2k HP, and he's got the Reaver queued up. He is going to be one tanky silencer. Assuming he's going to be able to finish that up. I'm pretty sure if you're Team Chuan, you catch whiff, if you catch a whiff of this, you have to think, okay, guys, we need to delay this. We cannot let this finish, because if he finishes that heart, we can't kill him. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that. I, they just don't have the damage right now. I don't know if they had a choice, really, to not go for farming tools, but um, it is definitely coming to bite them in the ass a little bit right now. However, all that said, you know, finishing off Tier 2 Towers is one thing. Breaking high ground is something completely different. And even though they do have the Lycan, it's not going to be that easy for Team Puppy to go up high ground and start knocking down those Tier 3 Towers. And that could be the opening for Team Chuan to try to get a handle on this game. And Marana going to be blocking the Antimage from taking down that bottom T1 Tower. They need these, this Tower Gold so, so desperately. If they can get a Tower, huge, huge win on the side of Team Chuan. But let's see how they're going to do this. They're going to cop a little bit of damage there onto mid one, going onto the high ground. And Team Puppy, they're just saying, OK, guys, let's, let's take this at our own pace. We do not need to rush this. We are in a really good spot. But the thing yeah. is, how long will they be in a good spot for? That's a good question. Uh, Yaps are going for the Force Staff, so some synergy with the Blood Seeker there. But, ah, the classic question mark, a little smack talk from Yapsor. That's a, a good strategy, when in doubt, go for the tilt play. Doesn't work, though. They are teammates. <laughs> well, for all we know, Yapsor could be the one that ends up losing these taunt wars. <laughs> we, we never know. We, we never, never know. know. All right, well, Team Puppy staying very aggressive, though. You can see their positioning on the map, pretty much staying in dire territory, um, limiting where they can farm. And this is really significant economic damage right now, clearing out all these neutral camps, keeping the waves pushed in. And even you see Chuan come out of the base like this. They drop the silence. Lycan's going to come in. And this should be a dead lone druid. There's nothing he can do. And that's it. He does have a buyback, but this could be the opening to try to push high ground. We'll see if they want to go up high ground first, though. Looking at the positioning of his team, they, they're not really in a position to go for any sort of push. It's just, it looks like they want to finish up their next set of items first before they go yeah. up high ground. It's yeah. Assault Caress on the Lycan, still that heart on the Silencer. Um, rather curious to know what the Mirana is going to be building up next. Four stuff finally finished on your app store, so as you said, a glimmer of hope for getting some of these kills if they synergize with mid one. And a Shadow Blade comes out on the Slark, so as we mentioned, one of the key items that enables him to get in the back line, find some initiations. Puppy going in deep though, starts things off to uh, initiate this fight, but now the Blood right. Puppy taking a lot of damage, but Oracle's there with the ult, and they will find the kill on mid one. Puppy should be able to survive this one, no problem as Oracle heals him back up. Very nice use of the ultimate there, allowing the silencer to, to go in uh, pretty aggressive. Oh boy, when mid one dies, that's pretty much a lot of the hope on the side of Chuan gone. They're gonna try and go for the jump here onto the terror plane. They managed to get him easily, even Evaporates. with the arrow whiff. 
Yeah, so we're going to be pushing the Lycan away, trying to burn his mana down, but more Lycan just turned around and right click too. He does a lot of damage as well. Teammates coming in to support him as yeah. well, and that top lane should be going down. The Lone Druid's coming in, he's got a bear available. I think at this point, you just simply go in Savage Raw and delay. Just delay, yep. delay, delay, so that mid one can come back. Yep, buy time for your Fallen Comrades. That will be a tier three tower, and now it's exposed. They'll be able to go for Shrines after this, but it looks like the melee barracks will be the first target, and they will find it. Now they switch over to the range. Terrorblade has respawned. Mid one coming back up, but it won't be in time to save this top lane. Now looking for some cleanup kills as Team Puppy makes the escape, but an exodus will be had, and there will be no casualties. Poor Terrorblade sitting at the lowest net worth of anyone in this match. Yeah, not really designed to be a support hero. Uh, he's doing everything that he can, but this is really just a, a tough situation for the Terrorblade. Well, one set of racks is gone now. What's the plan here for Puppy? Do they wait for the next Roche? It looks like they want to try and at least take down some shrines. Yeah, so blinking forward aggressively. No jump well, though, yeah, ever. Could kind of land on someone. Yeah, conventional logic, if this were just a, a classic professional game, I'd say, yeah, maybe wait for Roche, take your time, and just continue to starve the map. But Team Puppy may be on a little bit more of a timer than that. We'll see another team fight start to break out. Sunder used, and the disengage will be there. So no, no kill, despite a little bit of bloodshed. Yeah, I have a feeling Team Puppy is really, they're going to keep this aggressive. You can see an aggressive Moonlight Shadow now. They're just looking for blood. If you can find one pickoff, I think they can start chipping in another lane of barracks. Well, almost getting that arrow there onto the Slug, pouncing out at the correct time. And Puppy still looking for that blood. His heart is finally complete. So he's sitting at almost 3k HP on the Silencer. Yeah, that's... Yeah, not a very conventional build, but I think it makes a lot of sense here. You just need to be able to survive in these team fights, and of course, the longer Silencer can survive, the more kills he's going to rack up, the more int is stolen, and the more damage he does. So uh, the build definitely does make some sense. Oracle winning the battle to D Ward, but it may cost him his life. Yapsor doing a lot of damage. There's the false promise. It's going to buy him a little bit of time, but he is completely surrounded. It's going to be a dead Oracle in exchange for that D Ward. Yep. Nice little kill off. Yapsor just being like, nice. Nice, we got kills, guys. But they need a lot more kills than that if they want to make this comeback. They yeah. still need something. They need towers, they need hero kills, they just need to drag the game Giant long enough for someone to start scaling. Yeah, and look look at this. Potom also going to be going for uh, the Heart of Tarrasque, at least has it queued up. Already went for a relatively beefy build, the Dragon Lance into the Manta style, so plenty of survivability already, but uh, it seems like Team Puppy has identified the Ooh. weakness here. If we can just survive in these team fights, Crystal Maiden gets dusted, pops the ultimate, but interrupted by Yapsor right away, and it will be another pick for Team Chuan. Arrow gets avoided as well there by the Slark. So nice, nice little kill there on the side of Team Chuan. But they're going to be What did I say about that mana void? Ah, that, that, that mini stun's come in handy a couple of times. I don't really think it made that much of a difference. Well, you know, still an interrupt. Er, early, early on when he canceled some TPs, uh, that was pretty great plays. But I don't think the CM is... The CM is the least of their problems. Uh, that's definitely true. Uh, the Radiance just about done for Chuan on the Lone Druid here. Uh, is it Chuan on the Lone Druid? Well, I believe so. That uh, Yumi Wong was the, the drafter for that team. So I, oh. I believe that that's Chuan, though it is hard to tell with uh, right. the fake nicknames. But 25 minutes is going to be the timing for the Radiance. Uh, definitely not ideal. Uh, this could be the beginning of the turnaround. This is the item that enables Lone Druid to really start snowballing in terms of farm. One lane of barracks is very defendable. They could still drag this game out. Definitely not over for Team Chuan, but it's going to be tough, especially with that Assault Karas just finished up on the Lycan. Oh, they managed to find the Lycan. Going to try and go into the Wolf form, but can he get out of this? The Pounce does keep him in there for a little bit, but can they finally finish him off? He will get taken down by Chuan, but that Starfall coming in from the Varana, doing lots of spread damage. And Chuan going to try and live, gets four stuff, but the Bear Fall oh, not going to be enough, no. and the only survivor is the anti-mage Yapsor. Gonna be the last of his tribe to yeah. make it home. Not sure who's playing the Potom. My gut tells me it's probably Fada, but he is having one hell of a game here. He was farming like a madman from really wave one, and it's no surprise to see him number one on net worth. They initiated hard on the Lycan. They did find that kill, but a one for four, this will be a high ground siege. And now I may have spoke too soon about uh, Team Chuan there, Danny. It's looking like this is the beginning of the end. It could be, but they are starting to respawn, so this could be an opportunity for them to turn it around if they want to try and go for it now. There's no global silence, there's no Lycan on the field, the Mirana has no, um, no Moonlight Shadow either, so they don't really have the best disengage. 
but it's a matter of do they go now or never? Well, there's also no metamorphosis, so probably not a fight. I don't know if the Terrorblade metamorphosis is going Chuan to Team really want to fight. Well, it's at least something, right? When he has meta, they have one ranged hero, so you have someone in the back uh, oh, lobbing yeah, some so damage into the fights. But Puppy on the run, he'll be just fine. <laughs> oh, just yes, run away so from the anti mage. <laughs> An okay. anti-mage with a four-star spirit vessel. And a Yule Scepter on the way. So going the mobility build on already one of the most mobile heroes in the game. I like it. Oh, you can also cancel TPs with it as well, I suppose. That's Gets true. rid Very of true. the silence on himself, too. So. Oh, yeah. That's, there's a lot of utility in the Yule Scepter this game. That's like a fair point. Roche has respawned, though, and it's going to be Team Puppy right inside of the pit. Now a smoke from the Dire Squad. Will they be able to get there in time to contest the Roche? It's going to be close, and it looks like Team Puppy are actually oh. jumping out of the pit. Slark misses the pounce onto Oracle, but still taking a lot of damage. This is a sloppy fight for Team Puppy. They might still be able to clean it up as mid one gets low, pops the blood right. A lot of low health heroes. And all I hear is screaming. Yeah, as it looks like Team Puppy's going to gonna clean it up. Yeah. Back to Bursh. A little hard to tell who's who when we're zoomed out that far, but. Uh, the end result is the same. It's Team Puppy that trade two for nil, and they will be able to clean up the Roche. So 18k net worth lead, 26 to 19. It is Team Puppy that are happily in control of this match. With the Aegis and the Cheese, I don't really see Team Chuan being able to just put a dent into any of their heroes. Is the heart completed on the Marana? Um, I think so. Uh, she, oh, she pivoted, so oh. no heart, went for the butterfly instead. So more All of a right. traditional right-clicking carry type build. I guess evasion is pretty good against this heavy right-click lineup. Uh, pretty unlikely they're going to be able to farm an MKB anytime soon. True, very, very true. So here we go. High ground it is here for Team Puppy. Going to start working on this T3 in the bottom lane. Terrorblade's the first one to make it here, but he's taking a lot of damage just from right-clicks. Yeah, that Marana is really nasty. She does a lot of damage right now. Honestly, this feels like it's in the hands of Team Puppy to throw. Uh, if you're on this dire squad, you're pretty much hoping that they overcommit, dive tier fours, make some sort of a sloppy play that you can capitalize on. I don't think Team Chuan have too many other options. You know, I'm sort of tempted to say some split push. Maybe you get that lone druid elsewhere, but they need him for the high ground defense. Uh, he's very susceptible to rotations if he gets caught outside of the base. Cool pounces there, gonna land onto Puppy, but remember, Puppy is tanky. Yep, 3k HP and a second life. Well, they had the same idea, just completely disengaging, but now... What's the plan? Do they engage? Do they disengage? Are they trying to run into the jungle? We'll find out soon enough. They just showed the lone druid. Now they finally know where the rest of them are. They're coming in from the west side, but Global Silence is there. Nice disengage. And Puppy just going to slowly chew on this bear. The Marana's there. Nice savage roll. Going to send them home, but that frostbite going to be killing off the bear. I don't know if there's going to be a resummon, but the lichen just eats Chuan up. Can't do anything. Terribly going to go down as well. Oh. And everyone, again, going to be going in the retreat. They just cannot kill anything. They always run into that pesky silencer. It's just so damn tanky. Yeah, this is uh, getting pretty brutal to watch. Uh, that lone druid just melts under the damage. Now that tier three tower falls. Crystal Maiden gets off an ultimate mid one, pops the BKB, but it's not gonna be enough. He'll be dead. He does have a buyback available here, but without the ultimate, he's not gonna be able to do a hell of a lot. It looks like Team Puppy are just gonna go straight for the win. Tier four tower is getting destroyed, and this will be the thrown down. GG is called, Team and it is Puppy. Team Puppy that takes the first match. I gotta say, <laughs> I wanna know who it is in the crowd that's screaming, yeah. but you know, Puppy's, Puppy's team, they got the better draft. I think